Et eh bien le bonjour la team JVM, c'est Momo, j'espère que vous allez bien mais également que vous avez la forme. On se retrouve aujourd'hui sur la chaîne de Jeux Vidéo Magazine pour une toute nouvelle aventure et je suis super content d'être présent ici aux côtés de développeurs de Machine Game pour Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Et aujourd'hui bah du coup j'ai quand même quelques questions à leur poser. Thank you so much for, for having me today for this interview, little interview for Indiana Jones and the Great Circle coming December the 9 on uh, Xbox Series, PC, Game Pass and also PlayStation 5 in Spring 2025. Uh, Uh, I got a few questions for you for the project, but the first of all, um, how's it going today? What is your feeling about the Gamescom, the presentation of, of the game at the opening night live? What is your you feel today? Oh, uh, it's we, I mean it's a blast to be here. It's uh, really really cool uh, for me. It's the first time at Gamescom. I'm almost overwhelmed by the amount of people, and primarily this year it feels like there's insane amount of cool games and studios here presenting so i'm blown away we're having a blast <laughs> and you yeah no the same same here as well like gamescom is immense like it's such a big thing and you know for us we have been working on this for a long long time and now we finally get to show it like a bigger portion of the game we get to show gameplay we have in the theater a 13 40 minute long video showing off no not only sort of the action snippets that you see in a two minute trailer but you know, more of the adventure features and things like that so we're really happy to be able to show that and see what people think about it first of all uh, you recently revealed so the games released at December and also the game release on PlayStation 5 I think there's a lot of people who ask you um, why this choice actually and all of that stuff and uh, I think in gonna be the same thing uh, why this choice for the release on PlayStation 5 there's the Xbox series obviously there's also the release on the Game Pass what does means for Indiana Jones on PlayStation for the moment we can't release that many details in terms of the coming release for 2025 for PS5 uh, more of that will be announced and covered future on uh, but what we can say at this point from from a developer point of view and from machine games point of view we are you know extremely excited and we are really welcoming that decision that we can move forward with having a PlayStation uh, release uh, next year as well. So, you know, the more people that get to play and know uh, the character of Indiana Jones, the better. So, we are happy about the fact that it will be on PlayStation next year. More precisely, uh, more focus on, uh, on the game. Um, how did the genesis of the project take place? Uh, how the collaboration with Lucas the game uh, done? So, it all began with, with our friend, uh, Todd Howard. He had for a long time this, uh, this idea and the passion. And I mean, he's like one of the biggest Indiana Jones fans out there. And he's been wanting to do an Indiana Jones game for a long time. He had the opportunity to be able to go to Lucasfilm Games, uh, pitch that, uh, the core narrative of it. Uh, Lucasfilm Games were also e equally excited about, about the idea. Um, and then Lu um, Todd Howard took the project to Machine Games and said, Hello, uh, I have this little. Big fan of Indiana. Yeah, exactly. And and he thought that machine games would be a good fit to to develop it. And you can imagine the uh, excitement and joy within the halls of machine games when we were approached with this opportunity. So that's that's how it started. And uh, it is the the first time for you at Machine Game because before we know you for Wolfenstein, obviously, but. What does this mean for Machine Game for develop another license and an important license actually at your studio? You know, it's a it's a new license, sure, but you know, we have a way of making games at Machine Games. We have some uh, a, a number of core values that we stay true to, and and this is you know, we you go through the same process. You really start with a the story focus and this really helped with the collaboration with Lucasfilm Games as well like starting off in the first you know couple of months of pre-production really iron out what the story is and develop that with the character in focus with the IP in mind that's true for Wolfenstein that was true for Indiana Jones uh, and it really helped us with them because we can show them early on exactly what we were hoping to achieve uh, with the story beats with the characters and everything and then we just keep going and apply on sort of the sensibilities that you can see in, in all Machine Games games. And even further, like we have people, including myself, who worked on Chronicles of Riddick and The Darkness. You know, part of the reason why we really wanted to make this a first-person game, to make it a cinematic, uh, 
immersive story driven experience all the way through. And uh, about yes, the, the, the first person, uh, it's really interesting because there's a lot of adventures game in third person. It is a choice who was made earlier at the at the development. Do you make the decision after some months of preparation of uh, also uh, researching or testing? I mean, uh, for us, it's uh, it was a very uh, conscious choice from yeah. the beginning. Yeah. So one of those core things that we set out very early on to do that we decided this is what we're doing and then we have then we have stick to the plan and the reason for this choice is uh, is a multifold it is several aspects of it one is of course that within machine games we have this long uh, knowledge and experience of making first person games so we know how to make good first person games i don't want to brag but I, I i dare to say that we know what we're doing in the first person aspect beside that even with the collective um, knowledge within the within the walls of machine in games like Jens is mentioning we have people that worked on uh, Riddick and Darkness and obviously a lot of other games so we we're very familiar with that component the first person component so what we did was is there anything weird here in terms of making this new adventure game in first person it's like no not really why wouldn't we and and then that's what we've been doing the other aspect of it is that what we are trying to do with this game is to put you in the shoes of Indiana Jones, to put you in his shoes, to put on the hat, and it's you wielding the whip, right? To really step into the character. And there are a lot of things throughout the game where we push the player really close to things. You know, you come up close personal with solving puzzles. It's a very physical component in the game. You get up close and personal, dusting off walls, reading old scriptures, you know, finding clues, lifting that stone, all of those things. And, and obviously you get up close and personal punching bad guys in the face yeah. Yeah. and it is very satisfying to be in first person when we're doing all of that so it, it is a, an intimacy to the game and it also is good because from the context of you being Indiana Jones and we are you know it's it's an early decision and then it's a decision that we just felt you know stronger and stronger this is exactly what we should do and that's what we've been executing on. Why this choice to uh, put the set of Indiana Jones and the Great Circle after the first film? Uh, it is a choice who made uh, earlier in the game. Is there another uh, opportunity on the timeline or you made the decision of this is at this time? One is just how the narrative and the core story is written where it makes the most sense for this to happen. And from a narrative point of view, how we've chosen to, to write the story, it is the best fit. Uh, the game takes place in 1937, Raiders in 1936. Uh, so it is a, it's a good um, position to be in terms of timeline. The other aspect that is also equally important, uh, and in some regards maybe more important, but you know, it's uh, the fact that we deem Raiders to be the representation, the most iconic representation of Harris, well, uh, yeah, Harrison Ford obviously playing Indiana Jones, but the, the initial presentation yeah. of him as a, as a character that we have chosen to, you know, that we want to stick close to. There are several reasons behind and uh, it all comes together and makes sense in our world. And there's some characters of the first movie, Marcus Brody, obviously, but Marcus is also in the third film. And um, is there any other character for the first film? Because at the end of Raiders, uh, Indy and Marion Ravenwood is good terms, but after that we, we can learn it's more complicated on the third film and maybe on the fourth it's more over complicated. But is there other character of the, the second maybe or the first movie on the on the game? We saw a lot of um, of indication and also representation. The same plan with the big ball in the first movie. We saw Marcus obviously in the Marshall College. Um, what I can say when it comes to to those uh, aspects of the game is that you will recognize some you know familiarities uh, from from the early movies as we've seen with Brody. Uh, and uh, beside that there will also be an, a nod here and there uh, and some you know easter eggs or uh, blinks uh, to the uh, early uh, movies. Wolfenstein, after that Indiana Jones, something is happening with the Nazis at Machine Game and uh, how did you work with that? Is there any difference to 
to put this, this type of enemies on the previous game on Wolfenstein and actually on Indiana Jones. Is there any recurrence on that? Uh, how did you work with the, that type of enemy? It's, re, it's pretty fun to punch Nazis, <laughs> but with you it's very cool. With the gun, with the punch. And now the whip. And now the whip, exactly. That's the, <laughs> the good difference with uh, Wolfenstein, exactly. Um, I would say it's a kind of lucky coincidence all, uh, it's a coincidence, almost. Yeah. yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, it's a very good type of enemy. It's, it's very clear cut, uh, good versus evil, uh, easy to build around. We can build fantastic uh, antagonists like Emrich Voss that we have up here. Exactly. Such a great, uh, great carrier, uh, character. It's mostly a coincidence, but we embrace it. Uh, this game is very different than the Wolfenstein games where you wield you know, dual shotguns, yeah. uh, much slower paced. Uh, you have the whip, you can use it in combat, but it's also there for all the traversals, uh, you know, scaling walls doing things like that. The hand-to-hand, -hand, that's a new thing, like we didn't have that in Wolfenstein. We spent a lot of time and our talented programmers and, and animators have worked really hard to make that punch in the face yeah. really feel good. Yeah. Or picking up a banjo and, and smacking it. Ooh, like yeah. there are new ways to deal with the, with the enemies uh, yeah. in this game. Lots of similarities but also there's so much more to this. Like this is our longest and biggest game we've ever made, both both time-wise, feature-wise, everything. It's really blown away by the scope it ended up being. Uh, so we're really happy to see it come together now, because we do get to show the more... It's an adventure-first game. How long for the complete the game? At complete 100%? Uh, uh, do you have any hour or something? <laughs> we're, yeah. I'm, uh, currently, we're, we do not uh, really talk about hours, um, because it's kind of hard to, to do that estimate at this point. The, the game is the biggest game that Machine Game has ever done. So for the completionists that really want to do everything, you can spend a lot of time in the game. For the, for the player that just want to go through the golden path, this is still the longest game that we have ever done. So it is, it is a big game. There's a lot of content for you to explore in there. Yeah, it's different in, in our previous games. Why is we, you know, we are answering vaguely here because it, it's very much going to depend on your play style. Yeah. There's, there's a ton of content in there that's completely optional for the people who love puzzles. There are puzzles hidden throughout the, the world. There are big optional missions hidden around the world things like that so you can you can go like this a beeline through the story and you know it will be a, a, a good sized game or you can just go explore every nook and cranny search for the mystery collect every activity note find every adventure book and it's going to be a, a much longer game thank you so much for, for having me for, for that et merci beaucoup du coup d'avoir suivi cette, cette petite interview évidemment je vous dis à très vite sur la chaîne pour de nouvelles aventures prenez soin de vous et je vous rappelle qu'évidemment Indiana Jones and the Great Circle sortira donc le 9 décembre 2020 et en, euh, au printemps 2025 du côté de la PS5. A très vite, gros bisous, ciao